All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Feed Me Pixels channel. I'm your suave chupacabra space host, Larry the Chupacabra, and we're back for some more Astroneer, which recently came out into its pre-alpha form on Steam Early Access. When we last left off, I built a fancy research machine and also a smelter, and basically what we need to do now is I want to get ready to go on an underground expedition, essentially. And before I do that, I'm gonna burn through some of this extra resin because I honestly don't really need all that much of it. Or at least I don't need any of it right now. So I'm basically just going to use it to extend our base out a little bit with building a couple of these little nodes. And I, after playing in my playthrough on my own channel, I very quickly found that it's a lot better to spread your base out because these giant crafting tables can get a little bit uh, ridiculous and hard to manage very quickly. Uh, so let's see, we need to go get some more compound so that we can build a whole bunch of tethers. And then after we've got that going, we will find a way to go deep underground. Uh, possibly even finding a cave, but it looks like most of the mountains in this area are really, really far away, so that might not happen this episode. In fact, I'm pretty sure it won't. But that doesn't mean we can't go exploring like crazy people. Like, there's a whole bunch of compound right over the horizon over there. So I'm gonna start building out my tether in that Wait, oh, I can put the tethers back in my inventory, I remember now. Yeah, you can reuse these objects, too. Like, you can pick them up. It's just, they're so cheap. Especially with so many materials readily available on the planet that I never really saw a need to be too, too conservative with my harvesting. Although, I do tend to leave a lot of really ugly holes in the ground. But the good news is, if you have enough energy on board your spacesuit with your backpack, you can always fill those holes back in, because the suction tool has a fill option. But I also like the idea... Oh wait, that's a bad sound. Hey, okay, somewhere way in the distance I hear... a dust storm. So that means that we've just, like, gotten to the point where those will spawn, and those are a problem because the big dust storms kick up these massive square rocks you see around us. And they hit you in the head and they kill you and they're a pain in the butt. So I just want to pay attention and make sure that those don't sneak up on me. And there you see the moon and a whole nother planet rising up over the horizon. I can actually go to both of those locations, which is why... Like, they kind of look like a patchwork of randomly spawned junk right now. And if I had a wind generator, we'd be able to generate all manner of power from all this sweet, sweet, delicious wind. But I haven't really liked the wind generator, at least not in my other playthrough. Because, well, on that planet that I was on before, like, there just wasn't a lot of wind to be had. So there wasn't really a whole lot of point, to be honest. But, you know, that happens. So, um, let's build a couple more tethers out. I want to just use up all these spare tethers. And then we'll make our way back over to the base. And if I don't find what I want in an underground cave pretty close to here, then I will just go ahead and go over to one of those mountains. So I think that about fills up our inventory. Yep. So I'm going to go back to base. And we're going to find a place to go deep underground. So, that means we're going to have to find a hole basically just like this one. So let's see, we'll build... Uh, well, first we'll have to build a couple of those tethers. Where did that thing just go? Come back, you. You spicy boy. Alright. Yeah, we'll just have to build up some of these tethers so that we have plenty of equipment to go deep underground. So let's see, I'm gonna just go around, let's see, let's go around this side. It doesn't really matter all that much because you can actually tether through solid objects. So I don't actually have to be permanently attached to 
the terrain in order to go underground. Okay, so this is the problem. Those undulating green things are gas pods, and they are probably going to kill us. Uh, they're annoying because they put out some type of weird corrosive gas that can kill us even though we're wearing a spacesuit. It, uh, it doesn't honestly make any more sense to me than it does to you folks at home, but that's just kind of the nature of things. So I'm gonna try and build, like, a fancy ramp. Up oh, there, you see that gas coming to touch my butt? That's what I want to avoid. That means that there's one of them, like, right underneath of us, and I'm trying to build a fancy ramp so I can gingerly walk down there and kill it. Which just is, is just going to mean that I'm going to suck up the ground from underneath of it. Okay, that's the first one dead. I'm going to back up until that gas is gone. Uh-oh. Alright, I gotta make more of a ramp. This kind of follows with, like, Minecraft rules, too, where you can build your own ramps that let you go places. Which is the way that I have been preferring to go about doing things. And then each one of these plants has got one of these giant tumors underneath of it. And if I take that back to the base, if it doesn't roll off into the oblivion, I'll be able to research that for new and fancy stuff. Okay, that one's dead. And there's a lot of different things that'll kill you in this game. Most of it is going to be the local wildlife. For right now, there aren't really any animals, but there are sure a whole bunch of plants. That'll probably eat your face, so, you know, don't play with those if you don't have to. And essentially, once they stop, like, undulating with green, that's when you basically know that it's safe to go down. Or when you suck the tumor out from underneath of them. That that also tends to work. I usually just hear, wait till I hear that snapping sound. Oh, there's a lot of them down here. But this basically, this whole cave basically has all the things that I am going to need. So I'm just going to build my tether down here. And yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do. We got some tumors. Uh, underneath of this jelly bean plant is another weird tumor. And when I first started playing this game, I thought that the only way to get some of this material was to get these tumor-like materials. Because for whatever reason, like, one of these just randomly gave me copper, and I didn't realize where copper came from. And I'll explain that in further detail in a moment or two after I'm done killing these things. Okay, that thing's dead. Alright, and you're dead. Perfect. Oh, there's one of you hiding behind all the hydrazine. Well, that's shitty. Yeah, the first time I walked underground, like, there was a bunch of these things, and you wouldn't think that gases could kill you, because, like, I'm wearing a spacesuit. That doesn't make the slightest bit of sense. But it, in fact, can kill the shit out of you, because it's some sort of weird corrosive gas. And I do know for a fact that there are some chemicals out in the wide universe that can penetrate through a lot of different materials, simply because on the atomic level, a lot of different things are very porous. Oh, I guess this is where the rest of those compound went that fell through the ground. All right, well, it's good that we have access to those again. So actually, let's build a couple more tethers and I'll leave some of this compound here. Sense. Turns out that we didn't need quite to go as far as I did before. There's another type of plant down here that kind of looks like that thing over there. Uh, they're these cute little... They kind of look like bleeding... boogers. And they have spines that come out. Not a big fan of those, to be honest with you. So, I'm gonna try and avoid those as much as possible. Those things aren't nearly as deadly. They won't instantly kill you, but they will get pretty close. Uh, they have a big brother form that often spawns on other planets, and those things will straight up one-shot you, so... It's always good to be cautious when exploring outer space. Like, don't just go humping any old space ladies that you see out there, because they might be space man. Or if you're into spacemen, you know, be careful with the spacemen, because they might be a space lady. You know, always, always be suspicious. Alright, so, 
Here we have laterite, and laterite is aluminum ore. And the other thing we have down here, if I shimmy this direction, is there's also a yellow version, and that is going to be malachite, and malachite is going to be the copper ore. Uh, I had a lot of trouble finding that out because initially when you get it, it just, when you hover over the object itself, it tells you this is this thing. But it doesn't tell you until you go into the inventory what kind of ore it is, so I just threw it on the ground and completely, like, lost out on all of that time. So that was kind of awkward of me. But hey, it's all part of the whimsy and the adventure, right? Right? Hello? Right? Alright, so anyway, uh, we'll put this over here. And I want to get a couple of these for copper. Being very careful that I pay attention to my surroundings, so nothing tries to fondle me. Because there's quite a few things that'll kill you. Again, I'm, and I'm not even sure if I've experienced all of them. Because again, some of these planets are different. Like, I've seen plants this time around that I didn't see in my other playthroughs. So, it's entirely possible that you'll run into some randomly spawned stuff in the future as they add more content to this game that will murder your face and when you are least expecting it. So let's see, um... I'm gonna leave more of this compound here. I can always come back and get it. Mostly because a lot of this stuff is pretty persistent. All of this stuff will more or less stay here until I come back. Like, stuff doesn't just randomly despawn, although it will fall through the ground and it will blow away in the middle of, like, a crazy dust storm. So let's grab that other malachite, because we're going to need a lot of copper. And was there more here? I could have sworn there should be more, but I guess I was wrong. Alright, that's fine. We'll just start with three, and then I'll pop back over here and maybe get another thing of aluminum. Or if you're out in about in the European parts of the world, it's probably pronounced aluminium. Not really sure what the deal is with the difference. But, you know, whatever. It's just one of those cultural, you say tomato, I say tomato, and eventually the robots will exterminate all of us and say bleep bloop. That's, uh, that's basically my opinion on the whole thing. So let's go back upstairs and build us some new fancy shm... shm thingy my boppers. So, let's see, our home is over here. And since it's actually pretty close, I'm not gonna really worry about our oxygen tether all that much. And we're going to go ahead and at least try to build a 3D printer, because that's going to enable us to... I'm actually gonna expand this bridge, because it's stupid that it's so small. But the, the 3D printer is going to enable us to get a better supply of power, rather than these cheap, tiny little solar panels. So the way that this is going to work is I'm going to slap four things here, and it's automatically going to process all of it into the refined version. So I'm going to click this button, and there we go. It's going to suck in the raw ore and produce a bunch of copper. And then automatically sorts it based upon what type of material it is, Although, for the moment, uh, it doesn't really matter, because we don't have a lot of material. And then after that is done, where am I going to- oh, I need more resin, do I? Yeah, I didn't really leave myself a lot of room for stuff. So I'll just leave this stuff here, even though it's super valuable. And... I mean, this is one of those things, where, like, there's probably resin in every single direction in this game. So I can just pick a spot and just go and start exploring. And there is a lot to be explored in this game. Uh, it's a lot like, say, Don't Starve Together, where you can you can find other dead pioneers that tried to colonize this planet before you, but instead crash-landed because they're crap-outs. So you can go find their corpses and steal their stuff. And I, I tried to steal the corpses and make, like, a corpse gazebo, like if I was playing the game The Forest, but that didn't... Didn't really pan out like I had hoped it would, which is sort of unfortunate. And I am out of power again. So where is there a power node? I need more power. You know, there might not actually be a lot of power out here. I'm not gonna get a lot of power until it's daytime. So that's kinda shitty. 
But the good news is I have lots of power being generated by just my backpack alone, and I should get a little bit more once it becomes daylight. Let's just suck up the rest of this stuff. And you know what this stuff kind of looks like? It almost kind of looks like plastic bead pellets that are used in manufacturing. I don't know if you've ever watched any of those How It's Made shows, but I certainly recommend it. And when you start manufacturing things out of plastic, they basically just pour in a certain color of plastic into a giant vat, and it all just kind of looks like little plastic pellets, basically. Like, kind of what you'd feed your hamster, but don't... Don't feed it to your hamster unless you want your hamster to, like, look like your hamster, but stop moving for forever. Okay, so this just needs some copper, which I have. Slap that here, and slap that here. And presto changer, we've got a really slick 3D printer. And once we get some power, this will allow us to... So let's slap one of these on here, too. Once this has power, and I can put this anywhere, we'll be able to use this to generate a better... Uh, a better solar panel that's going to make our lives, like, a thousand times easier. And I think to build that, we're going to need some more compound. So let's go explore... what direction is that? That is... Kind of to the southeast over here from our base. And there is kind of a compass, it's just kind of a weird compass. In fact, I didn't even realize you had a compass in this game until I died a couple of times and I was fidgeting with my character's corpse out in the woods. So let's see, there's just a metric boatload of the compound way over here. Oh, and I'm out of tethers, so it looks like I'm just gonna rough it. Let's see. Yeah, I want all of this. I could also just go back and get that other compound, but I'm kind of lazy. At least I'm in video games. Which is an interesting sentence that you can say, considering that video games require not moving very much. But there's like a men mental thing in a game like this, where your brain's just like, nah, fuck it. Get a little bit more resin. Get a little bit more compound as we get more energy back. That's good enough. We only need two in order to start building a solar panel. And you might think I've played quite a bit of this, that I have a pretty good memory of what everything is going to require of us in order to build. So, looks like that stuff is trying to fill up first before the rest of these materials. Let's just plug this in here. And that'll help to fill this up like PDQ. There we go, beautiful. Ah, uh, very nice. So, I'm gonna start with a solar panel. And these things look really cool, by the way. Like, I absolutely love the design of all the different machines in here. It's almost like playing with, like, big kid Legos in this game. Or, like, the prefabbed Lego components. So there we go, we got a really cool solar panel that'll actually recharge our station for us. And then we can slot that puppy right here. And it'll start filling up each one of our machines if they need more power. So after that, I think I'm gonna want to build a wind turbine. And the good news is, I have plenty of stuff to make more aluminum. So before we go, let's build a wind turbine, and that'll provide us, because this is a very windy planet for whatever reason, this will hopefully provide us with plenty of energy even during the night time. So there we go, I'll grab you, and you. And that'll allow us to get even further into the game. Let's just slap these puppies right here. Whoops. No! Don't leave me, Aluminum. I need you. We're supposed to be friends. Whoa, okay, that is bugging out. So, usually it tries to automatically, like, fill what it's required it needs to, like, build stuff. But sometimes it's a little glitchy, because, again, pre-alpha build, so shenanigans are bound to occur. But hopefully not too many shenanigans. So I'm gonna actually take this solar panel back from here, and I'm going to put this... Really, is it not gonna work over there? Do I have to put it up here? 
It's super windy. That's odd. Yeah, it looks like I need it up higher. So let's take these solar panels off of this machine. And we'll just slot it right here. And that should work just fine, I think. And we'll just keep these extra solar panels with us, because why not? They're not really serving a purpose anywhere else, so you might as well use them for something. So, unfortunately, wind is not as, like, a reliable an energy source in this game, but, you know, you take what you can get when you are on a desolate planet with no hope of, survive of like, rescue, if shit goes wrong. And on that note, uh, that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me, Larry the Chupacabra, for some more Astroneer, which is out in early access right now. I hope you've been enjoying so far. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and definitely check out twitch.tv slash feedmepixelslive for our great live streamers. Or check out our website, feedmepixels.com, where we've got a lot of great written content, including content from yours truly. So I'll catch you guys and gals next time, and toodaloo, everybody.